in this video i'm going to talk about uh, few uh, frequently asked questions on uh, variable selection in uh, analytics interviews the first question which is uh, on missing values so uh, one of the question that is often asked is why keeping variables with high missing values uh, is an issue in a, in a predictive modeling when you keep uh, variables with high uh, number of uh, missing values in your model uh, while building models then uh, there is going to be uh, a number of problems so one of the problem is that um, you will be losing information and the results uh, from your models uh, is going to be uh, biased okay so one should ensure that uh, variables with very high missing values um, a very high number of missing values should be uh, kept away from the modeling or should be dropped from modeling right so these problems let's understand these problems uh, two problems so here is an example we have got data for customer income uh, customer age and gender right so if i use all three uh, variables in the model uh, where customer income is having quite a number of uh, missing values right um, out of like eight observation five of them are uh, or nine observation five six of them are missing right so if i i'll use this data in modeling so six observations which uh, where customer income is uh, missing will be removed from the uh, entire data set and only uh, the model will run or the statistical software will give you results on uh, you know data for uh, customer income not missing right or in other words um, the entire row uh, corresponding to the missing value of customer income will be uh, deleted or will be dropped from the analysis now uh, we will be losing information if that happens now that can potentially give us bias results why because um, if if uh, you know there is a number of observations which are going to be removed from the uh, data set uh, before even uh, the algorithm runs then um, a certain uh, um, you know segment of customers in, are not going to be represented in the uh, final data set right uh, because uh, it, it say for example in this case we have uh, gender male and female right uh, so if, if you say that most of the observation in the missing case are uh, male right S uh, see for example out of the six cases uh, four of them are male right so you are removing four observations from your data set and finally was under representing the male population in your analysis so that's going to give you a very biased result right so that proportionate of gender like male and female has to be represented in the uh, sample data that you are using for modeling so missing value causes this problem so one of the solution to this is that remove this particular variable if it is important then you know you can use variable a uh, missing value treatment later on but if it's not so important variable it's good to drop this variable so that's one variable selection uh, criteria that you know with high missing values you can think of dropping the variable the next question is how does variance play a role in variable selection uh, well you always expect the independent variables uh, to have very high variance so why is that so uh, well if the independent variables uh, got very high variance then its ability to explain or to ability to explain the variation in the dependent variable will be uh, high right or at least there is high chance uh, there is relatively higher higher chances that uh, its ability to explain the variation in dependent variable uh, will be more right so let's take an example so i've got one dependent variable uh, the first one is dependent and there we have got three independent variable independent variable one is all the values are constant all the values in this independent variable are constant that means uh, if you compare the values from dependent variable with independent variable one 
it doesn't really change right even if there is a change in the dependent variable there is no change in independent variable that means uh, they are not related at all right irrespective of uh, you know irrespective of the uh, values of independent uh, variable one the dependent variable is changing without following any pattern so this variable independent variable one is not very useful now go to the independent variable two now you see that there is some sort of variation there are two values uh, two one one but the variability is much less right there are only two values right so um, you can see that last four observations independent variable takes the value of one but dependent variable takes very different values 48 60 70 88 it's increasing but independent variable 2 is actually constant that means a major chunk of these observations are actually not very uh, core, uh, not very related or you know there seems to be non dependency so although this is better than independent variable 1 you cannot use independent variable 1 here you have to drop it independent variable 2 is better than independent variable 1 in terms of its ability to predict or but it's of course not the best one now let's go to the last variable independent variable 3 independent variable 3 is actually changing right every uh, level it is changing from 1 to 6 so now you try to uh, you know uh, compare it with the dependent variable you see that uh, with increase in independent variable 3 dependent variable is also increasing in that order so we can see some sort of a pattern so independent variable 3 is the best variable out of these three uh, variable independent variables uh, to predict uh, the variation in dependent variable. so you can drop independent variable 1 and 2 from this analysis and only go with uh, independent variable 3 The next question is how does correlation play a role in variable selection? Well, ideally low correlation between independent variables uh, is expected. So between independent variables you always expect that they are very low correlated and you always expect high correlation between dependent and independent variables. Now you have to be very careful here. Um, so what we are saying is that if there is high correlation between dependent variable and independent variable then it's good why is it good because you always want independent variable to explain dependent variable so they have they have to be related right much uh, more relation between them good for it but between two independent variables right which are in the right side of the equation there should be less correlation and the explanation for this is that if they are very highly correlated then uh, there will be redundancy right you are using the same information again and again so let's take an example it will be more clear say for example uh, we have got two independent variables uh, net income and gross income and the correlation between these two independent variables uh, is 0.9 right now should we use both these variables or should we just drop one of them well you always see uh, you know intuitively you just if you even think gross income and net income um, tend to be very similar variables right so they are highly correlated right now these are two independent variables so there is a huge overlap between gross income and the net income right so it's always good that we drop one of these variables from the one of the variable from the model because otherwise you are using the same information again and again and making the model more complex there, is, there are there are also more technical issues related to this will not go in, into the details of it but yes when there is high correlation try to get rid of uh, you know as many variables as possible so what we are essentially trying to do here is that uh, try, uh, giving more information to the model with less number of variables right that should be the motive the next uh, example is uh, it's a real correlation between a dependent variable and independent variable so profit is our dependent variable and age is our independent variable now the correlation is 0 0.05 that's a very low correlation that means profit of a company is actually not related to the age of the customer 
right they are very less related right or the correlation is very low so it's very unlikely that a's will explain the variability or a's will be able to help in predicting profit of the organization right so we may also think of dropping uh, age from the model if it is not helping to you know predict so these uh, we you know these are some of the simple way of you know selecting which are the uh, best set of uh, variables uh, before you you know you start estimating your final model or if you know so these are some of the very basic things you can use to drop some of the uh, variable uh, not so useful variables the next question is how does r square play a role in variable selection um, you always uh, add the independent variables which increase r square of regression uh, or in other words any independent variable which increases the r square of regression model uh, should be retained in the model um, if a variable is not increasing then uh, and it's not very important then you should uh, think of dropping it not all the time because maybe the variable is important for uh, uh, explain explaining um, the uh, you know the problem statement then then you should keep it otherwise if it's not that an important variable and it's neither increasing the r square value of the model then better to drop the model variable if you have too many variables otherwise if there are only few set of variables then you do not have uh, much of luxury of dropping you only have you know very small set of variables then you can think of keeping all of these um, so when there is a uh, you know question of dropping one of the variables from two variables say we have got variable one and variable two and so which one of these variable is to be retained and which one is to be dropped so how do they take the decision just uh, you know add variable one to the model and see how it is increasing the r square next and drop the variable one and now you add variable two to the model now see how the uh, r square value is changing uh, so uh, if the r square value changing it uh, more in variable one then it should be kept or it should be retained variable two should be dropped right so the one which is increasing the r square value more should be retained now the next question is how variable transformation play a role in variable selection uh, this is a little complicated so let's try with an example uh, let's say we are trying to model income with respect to age so we want to know how age uh, impact income or how we can predict somebody's income with respect to age right so that kind of a model now uh, we know that um, income increase rapidly with age initially and then you know it, it gets settled down and then actually go drop it actually uh, you know drops after a while right especially in uh, uh, in blue collar jobs right um, so uh, how do we model this right so if you have a linear relationship between income and age that we can see here on the uh, the, the, the left hand side of the graph uh, if y is in your income and x axis it's is and you say that in there's a linear relationship or there's a straight line relationship that's wrong because income doesn't increase linearly with age in fact it has a non-linear relationship uh, because income actually grows and it it actually uh, increases in a decreasing way right so instead of using age as the independent variable we can actually use the logarithm of age so we can drop age from the uh, from the model uh, from the set of variables we have for model and instead we can take transformation of that variable uh, logarithm transformation of that variable and use that transform variable in the model that will be more appropriate and that will be uh, you know uh, more suitable for the forecasting and also for explaining things later on so that's also one way of you know selecting the best uh, set of variables for the model 